ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Today with Obi Sans Knives, it's your host Shad, I'm going to show you how to build one of these little propane forges. And it doesn't look too great, and it's not nothing pretty, but it works and it will get up to welding heat with the double burners at full heat. It's pretty nice. I still need to build a stand for it, but here's how I built it. Stay tuned and watch. Thanks. So here's the propane tank we'll be using for the forge. and It's 18 inches tall. We'll have 17 inches of usable chamber. It's 12 inches across with the uh, fire wool in there, the kale wool. We will have an 8 inch chamber inside the forge. And i got to clean up around the top edge so that I can plasma cut it. Alright, so once you got the rust cleaned off of the area where you're cutting, um, fill it up with water. Like if you don't know if it has any residual gas in it, just fill it up with water till just below your cutting. So right here, I have it filled up with water until about right here, so that way if I'm cutting and there is anything, nothing's going to blow up in my face. So we got the top off. I never knew there was that much stuff inside a propane tank. Um, it's full of rust. It's not too bad though. We got an okay even cut. Clean that up with the grinder. Clean off all the paint. Clean the inside. And then we'll have to cut off the other end too. Okay, so we have the top bottom cut off. We have everything ground. There's no paint left. Uh, so next I'm going to drill holes for the burners. So I'm going to drill one here and one here. Originally I was going to drill four so that I can move my torches around and all that. But really I'll just end up losing heat and with two burners in each spot, I can heat the whole thing. Um, then, uh, oh, and I can turn off one and leave the other one running. So I can heat this front if I really just want to burn small. And then uh, you can pick one of these tanks up anywhere. So this is a, I believe it to be a seven gallon tank. It's off of a forklift and it was just scrap, it was damaged, it has a dent. It has a dent right here, so they took it out of commission. And so I got it, and that's it. So I'll be back when the holes are drilled out. Yeah. All right, so I ended up plasma cutting out the two holes right here and right here. Uh, they aren't perfect, but they're good enough. And then, so here, I'm gonna cut this into like three inch sections, and. That's going to make up my flange for my burners to go into. And it fits in there with a little bit of clay. But I can weld around that. That's going to be fine. Um, so that's going to be my flange. And so next, I'm not sure what we're going to do next. We'll see. Okay, so what I did next is I machined down. See, I machined this one down so that it fits inside of the burner tube. So it'll fit in here, just barely, and it's going to get held in by a set screw. And it's part of the orifice assembly, so this is the part of the orifice that'll hold it in the burner tube perfectly. And it fits really well, like, very well. Um, so that's what I just did. Now I just got to do it to the other one, so that it also fits in its burner tube. And then I can probably, I'm not sure what we'll do next. I thought I'd just hurry and show you the whole orifice assembly. So it's a .025 MIG tip tapped into a, I don't know, just kind of a three, it's a quarter inch fitting of some kind and it had small enough a hole that I could tap and put this in. And then I have that bushing that I just machined down and then you got a 90 degree elbow and then I just got an on and off valve because I'll have two torches so I can turn one off if I just want to heat part of the forge instead of the whole thing so that'll be held in with a set screw and down here we'll have our flare which I still need to make um, so there's most of the torch finished and I'll show you how I did my hoses and everything at the end of the video so I went ahead and just built the burners and David Hammer ha on YouTube has a very detailed video titled how to build a propane burner 
Um, it's really detailed. He tells you everything, all the measurements. Go watch that. Build the burners. My main thing is on the forge. So I'll show you them working real fast. So that was them running both at 10 PSI if you were wondering. And watch out when you're building them. I was actually wearing some gym shorts and I knocked up against this burner and it burned a hole in them. Um, they do get hot all the way up to here. Normally you can grab them right here just fine. If they've only been running for like 15 minutes you can hold them right here. And they won't be hot but this whole tube gets hot and down here will get orange. But once I put it inside the forge body the flare itself will be protected from most of the heat and it shouldn't heat up nearly as much as it does just fully exposed to the atmosphere. So I'll get back with the body plan. So here's the basic layout of what the forge is going to be. So all the channel iron is 3 inch and all the piping that I'm going to be using is going to be 2 inch pipe and this is 12 inch long channel iron that's going to form the doors on the front and back there's two sets of these. And so this is a six inch long piece of channel iron that the forge is going to sit on. It's going to be at a slight angle. This is the top of the forge. So the torches are going to go in at a slight angle. And then we're going to have two pieces like this that have the slots in them to help airflow that are just cut in half fire bricks. And they're going to go there and there inside of the bottom. There's two of them in there, which is a total of 18 inches of fire chamber and there's only two torches but I'm making three holes that way I can change the tor the torches position and get a different effect and so these this there's four three and four and a half inch long two inch pieces of pipe there's three of them they're gonna have three set screws in each one and they're all gonna be in there at an angle like that welded in once the insulation's in place and then I'll be able to change the torch's position. So if I want more heat here, I put two torches here. If I want heat just in the middle, I'll just turn on one torch in the middle. Or if I'm doing something long, I'll put two torches far apart. And then on the front end, I'll have this door. Which will be elevated. There'll be a plate welded onto this, and then this will be welded onto it. So it's kind of... It's going to be like this high instead of on the ground like it's set up right now. And then we're just going to have the torches going in the side. And that's going to be the layup of the forge. And then I'm going to put it on a semi-rim for the stand about three feet off the ground. I'll bring you along while we tap three six millimeter holes an inch and a half in on this pipe. Three of them equally spaced around. I'll bring you along. When I, I'm marking a specific length on any round or square stock, a trick I like to use is I'll get a flat plate and I'll measure how far I want to go in. So I want these holes to be drilled an inch and a half in, so I'll make a line an inch and a half. I'll draw that across. And then I just take the pipe and I put the edge of the pipe where the line is and then I just look at the edge of the metal sheet and that's how I mark my holes. When I'm dividing round stock into thirds, I like to go like and just make it like a peace sign almost. And then if you want to make it in sixes, six, then you just add one halfway in between each one of those. But that's where our three equally spaced, kind of equally spaced, more like right there and right there. That's where our holes will be. Any pounding on metals when it's not hot is done on a little H-beam because I don't want to dent my anvil. So now, we'll start center punching the holes. Sorry, I'm in the camera shop. Just like that. Once all three are marked and I know where I want them, I'll heavy mark them. Or I'll really indent it, I guess you'd say.
Then you get a drill bit slightly smaller than the size of hole you're tapping so you can cut in the threads. And you chuck it up. So line up your drill bit, put a little bit of oil on it, put your eye protection on. Drill. Then go around and chamfer all three holes out. Like, just like that. Then you tap them. I'm using, I'm using six millimeter bolts. I use them on everything because then everything in my shop all takes the same size of threads. So I always use half inch and six millimeter, which is kind of funny, but that's just what I do. Now just clean all the burrs out. You don't want them to be catching on your torch or messing up your airflow or anything like that. Blow the freshly tapped holes out with compressed air. Test fit your bolts to see if they're generally lined up. Mine aren't perfect. That one's a little crooked. This one's good. These two are a little crooked, but they'll be okay. Now repeat it to the other three and I'll be back. So I brought you along to show you the process. Um, I just put in the insulation. I have two inches of insulation, one inch, so it's easier to change out and cheaper each time you have to change that inside insulation, which is, I heard if you use it like almost daily, it's like two or three times a year. And then on the bottom, I got one inch underneath those one inch thick fire bricks right there so it looks pretty good and I wore gloves and a respirator and everything when I was installing it I just sprayed rigidizer all over it I'm gonna weld the doors on here here and on the back and once I have those on I'll have two inches of insulation everywhere without any um, real holes and then the hole that I'm not using here, out of the three, I think when I first started up, I'll just burn these two and I'll plug this one up with all the excess little K wool. Um, and then I'll stuff all the excess around the torches too so I don't have any holes or anything. But that's how far we're coming along. And I'll bring you back once these are welded on and we have the torches in. Or once the doors are on and these are on, I'll bring you back. So I haven't got the stuff to build the stand yet, but I do have the forge body finished, the torch is inserted, everything insulated and closed up. The back is closed, the front doors are just open a little. I'm going to light up this paper and throw it in. If it doesn't work perfect, don't go too crazy. I'll adjust it, but if there's any prolonged issues at the end of the episode that you know about that you can be helpful with and make kind of suggestions I'd appreciate it so let's see if it'll work Nope. Okay, take two. Last time I think I need to turn the propane on before I throw the piece of paper in.
Take three, I need to find a better way to light this thing. I'll figure it out and get back to you. So you can see it's kind of working. I got some air issues or something. And so ladies and gentlemen, I think I got it working pretty good. I'm happy with it. I'll show you an update when I get a stand built for it. Um, if you look up in there, one sec, I'll show you. It's got blue flames coming out. They're just really temperamental and uh, like where the actual burners coming out though it's blue it just it turned in red and I don't think that's right so I gotta adjust something and do something but I'll get it working better but it's heating metal you can see in there that's orange but I don't it's not as good as a coal fire yet so I'll keep working on it thanks have a good one Obi Stan's out